What's up guys, Nathan here, and today I want to talk about a poker hand that the vast majority of poker players do not play correctly. This might be costing you money at the poker table as well. I'm going to walk you through some examples today to help you play this hand better, so let's jump right into it. All right, so what is the big hand that so many people struggle with at the poker tables? In my humble opinion, having coached hundreds of players at the lower stakes and mid stakes, and having played millions of hands myself, and that is is small pocket pairs. Now I should mention right off the top what I mean by small pocket pairs is specifically or baby pocket pairs as they're also called is pocket twos, pocket threes, pocket fours, pocket fives, and pocket sixes. Pocket sevens on to about pocket tens or pocket jacks are typically referred to as middle pocket pairs or middling pairs. And everything above that, aces, kings, queens, is referred to as a premium pocket pair. So I'm specifically talking about in this video, pocket twos to pocket sixes. Now what's the big problem with these hands? Well, number one, they're not winning hands, guys. A lot of people, in fact, most poker players, I find do not understand this. They don't know this. And if you play online poker, you could just use a program like Poker Tracker. I'll have links in the description below. And you can actually just go in there and filter for yourself and see the cold hard evidence that you're not going to be winning with these hands over the long run. Now, if you're a regular watcher of the channel here, by the way, make sure you're subscribed to catch all my latest poker strategy videos. You already know that we talk about a lot of hands like suited connectors, suited aces, suited one gappers, and so on that are also not winning hands over the long run. Again, a lot of people are shocked to understand this doesn't mean that we should not play these hands. That's kind of the irony of the situation. You have to play these hands in order to balance your range, in order to let people know that, hey, you're playing a bunch of different hands. You're not just sitting around waiting for pocket aces and pocket kings, because if you do that, of course, nobody's going to give you any action. So we need to play small pocket pairs, baby pocket pairs, Pairs, but we just need to use the right strategy. Let's talk about that right now. All right, so first off, I like to get some sort of rules out of the way right off the bat that you can take to the poker table right away. And number one is that if you play in full ring, aka nine player poker games, or sometimes 10 player, I would recommend, as I talk about in my poker books, just folding these hands from the first three seats at the table. This is referred to as early position or under the gun. So I'm talking about a full ring game. Fold these hands, pocket twos to pocket sixes if you're in the first three seats. Now, if you play six max online, these seats don't exist. So you can play these hands from any seat and if you play six max. And of course, if you play something like heads up, of course, you're always gonna be playing these hands. You should also come in for a raise in all situations with these hands. I've covered this extensively in these videos here in the channel, in my books. I talk about this at length as well in my brand new Elite Poker Training University, 17 plus hours of advanced training, dozens and dozens of cheat sheets walking you through exactly what to do. I'll have links for all that in the description below. But the bottom line, guys, is we want to be taking control when we enter the pot, if possible. If somebody has raised it already, yes, we should be calling with these small pocket pairs in order to hit a set on the flop. A set is when we essentially make three of a kind on the flop flop and that is a very very strong hand because it is well hidden unlike trips where if you had a hand like eight seven for example and the flop came seven seven king that's called trips it's not nearly as well disguised because everyone can see the seven seven on the flop but if you have a hand like pocket threes for example and the flop comes king three eight your hand is much better disguised and you can often win a massive pot if somebody has a king for example and we're going to discuss some specific hands in a second here we need to understand that that's our whole point when we hit the flop, but pre-flop, you wanna understand that you wanna raise these hands if you're first in and you want to call a raise typically in order to hit your set on the flop. Now, one huge thing that you want to avoid with these hands is do not, guys, do not call three bets with these hands. Now, what do I mean by a three bet? Talking about a situation where you raise pre-flop and then somebody re-raises you. Guys, it doesn't matter if you're in position, out of position, and if, by the way, if you don't know what in position, out of position means, I'd recommend simply reading my free poker cheat sheet. That'll be the top link in the description below. It breaks it all down for you. Bottom line, guys, it doesn't matter what your position is at the poker table. If you raise, somebody re-raises you, you want to fold these hands pre-flop. Don't dig
dig your own grave in poker by calling re-raises pre-flop against a far superior range. This is a great way to light money on fire with these hands. So let's jump into an example here. You are in middle position in a six max poker game. Remember, we already talked about we're going to play these small pocket pairs from every single seat in a six max poker game. And you have pocket threes, three of hearts, three of spades. What should you do? You should raise. Let's flip the script a bit and say that you're in middle position and somebody has already raised it in early position. Once again, I have charts in my free poker cheat sheet. If you don't know what these positions mean, there'll be links again to that in the description below. You should call a raise in that situation. Let's move on to post flop now. And let's talk about the biggest mistake that people make with these hands is running bluffs with them. It's not knowing when to fold and even worse running bluffs with these hands. Guys, the first thing you need to know about these hands, small pocket pairs, is that they are terrible bluffing hands. And the reason why guys is because if you miss your set on the flop and you're going to miss your set, by the way, around eight out of nine times, the vast majority of the time, you're literally from a mathematical point of view in very, very bad shape. In fact, if somebody has top pair or middle pair or bottom pair, it doesn't actually even matter, they are typically around 90% to win versus you on the flop. And the reason why is because with a hand like pocket threes, for example, if you miss the flop, there's only two other threes in the deck. I think we said in the previous hand, we had the three of hearts and the three of spades, I believe it was. So there's only the three of diamonds and the three of clubs remaining in the deck. Those are the only only cards that can help us win the hand. And that is why these hands are terrible candidates for running a bluff. Most of the time, guys, when you miss your set on the flop and somebody makes up, you know, any kind of reasonable bet, you just want to be folding. Let's walk you through an example once again. You've got pocket threes, same hand, actually, three of hearts, three of spades. Flop comes down with the king of hearts, 10 of clubs, and eight of diamonds. They make a bet. We're assuming that you called pre-flop, so you are the pre-flop caller. They make a bet here on the flop. Guys, just fold. There is no reason to get tricky here. This is not the kind of hand that you want to be floating the flop with here and trying to outplay them and get all fancy and tricky. This is not the hand to do it with because of the reasons that I just discussed. You literally only have two cards remaining in the deck to help you potentially win the hand later on. And that's why, you know, it would be much better to bluff with a hand that has a lot more equity in a situation like this, like Queen Jack, for example, which would be an open-ended straight draw on this board and also has two live cards, the Queen and the Jack. If this player had a 10, for example, we would have solid equity. We would have the eight outs to the straight, plus potentially six more with the Queen and Jack if they're live, meaning 14 total outs. Whereas with our pocket threes, hopefully you're following along here, we only have two out. So guys, make sure you like and subscribe if you found this one helpful. Be careful with these small pocket pairs. These are the hands that a lot of people massively misplay and it ends up costing them big time in the long run for their long-term poker results. And lastly, once again, if you want to know my complete poker strategy, make sure you grab a copy of my free poker cheat sheet. That'll be the top link in the description below. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll catch you next time.